Okay, so we finally built up to the uh, major piece of this section. How do I multiply a polynomial to a polynomial? So we'll first start with a by times a by. All right, and uh, again, I want to uh, basically hone in on the fact that all we're doing is using distribution. All right, there's some other tricks that I'll show you later in 4.6 or maybe at the end of this uh, particular section. But uh, let's just concentrate on the idea that it's distribution. Um, that'll build up to some important ideas in Chapter 5. So let's make sure we see it as the distribution it is. So, for example, for the first one, uh, let's forget for a moment that, uh, you know, that uh, 3 is there. If that was just the monomial 2x, I would be distributing it, right? If that was just the uh, monomial 3, I would be distributing it, right? Or vice versa, right? If we just had an x here, I would be distributing it. If I just had a 4 here, I would be distributing it. So it, a single term would be distributed no matter what. So let's just take a look at right what happens if I multi take this whole entity and I distribute it into that, or vice versa. I'll show both. So if we distributed this into that term, this is what the work would look like. It would be 2x plus 3 times x plus 2x plus 3 times 4. So I'm literally distributing that whole binomial into that binomial. So this entity times x plus this entity times 4. And then you can see what happens again is we're back to distribution. Distributing the x, we get 2x squared plus 3x plus distributing the 4, we get 8x plus 12. And so we've exhausted all our distributions. And now we're back, we're basically back to the idea of simplifying by combining like terms. If you look at that, those two terms are like. So putting in descending order, we have a 2x squared. 3x's and 8x's give us a combined total of 11x's and then plus 12. So there's basically what happens when we multiply a polynomial to a polynomial. You're basically distributing. We did it once, we did it twice, we did it three times. And just to show you that it doesn't matter which way we distributed, uh, when I did this problem, I took this binomial and distributed it in that one. What if we did it the other way around, right? Take this one and distribute it that way. Well, I would basically have, right, a 2x times an x plus 4 plus a 3 times an x plus 4. And that way might seem a little more soothing. We're used to distributing things from the left rather than from the right. But it's still distribution, right? So we're taking that times a 2x plus this entity times a 3. And then we're back to distributing again a mono times a polynomial. So we get a 2x squared plus 8x. Back here we get a 3x and plus a 12. All right, seeing our like terms again, 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. So distribution. All right, so uh, make sure you're understanding that step before we get to a shortcut here in a moment. So I'm going to keep showing distribution until we get to to uh, harder examples. So uh, again, multiplying a binomial times a binomial, you pick which side you want to distribute. I'm going to distribute this one over here. So we get 5x times x plus 2. We're subtracting, and I get a 4 times x plus 2. So my distribution process with an entire binomial, right? So this times the 5x, this times the 4, and then we're just distributing across a subtraction symbol. And again, I have distribution. So when I distribute here, I get a 5x squared plus 10x. We have to be careful on this back end because not only am I distributing a 4, but I'm also distributing a minus. So recall, when I distribute a minus, it changes signs. It's almost like distributing a negative 4. So we get a negative 4x, a negative times a positive, right, gives us negative 8. And again, we have some terms that are like. So we get a 5x squared, that looks like plus 6x minus 8. So distribution, right? So distribution to start it, distribution here, distribution there. And in this case, we had to be careful around the distribution of a minus sign. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, making this harder, what happens if I have a by times a try? Well, the same thing, it's distribution. So I'll basically take this entire trinomial and I'll distribute it into that entire trinomial. And so we end up with x times x squared plus x plus 2, right? And then we're distributing a, across a positive, and then 5 
times x squared plus x plus 2. So there's my distribution. And we see that here and here there's more distribution. So distributing the x, we get x cubed plus x squared plus 2x. Distributing the positive 5, we get a positive 5x squared, a positive 5x, and a plus 10. So we've exhausted all our distribution yet again. And so at this stage of the game, we're just looking at like terms. So the highest term is x cubed. There's an x squared, and there's an x squared. They combine up to 6x squared. Here's something with 2x, and here's something with 5x. They both have an x in common, so that's 7x. And then that 10 is the only term. So uh, basically, multiplication is distribution on steroids. right? And before we do more, because this is getting a little lengthy, showing all that distribution, let me just kind of share with you guys. It's, it's kind of a shortcut. Um, basically, you can see through all this distribution, it basically comes down to taking this term and distributing it to all the terms over there and then taking the 5 and distributing it all over there. I kind of call this shortcut term by term multiplication. And that's literally what's going on there. And so this step, if we go term by term, you're just kind of eliminating that step right in there. So x times x squared would give us x cubed. x times x would give us x squared. x times 2 would give us the 2x. So we multiply literally term by term. And then we've exhausted the x, so now it's onto the 5, and it gets distributed. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 2 is 10. And then we simplify by combining like terms. So it might be, especially when we start doing these crazy ones where we have three terms or fractions or all that stuff, you know, rather than showing that distribution step, which gets a little lengthy, right? it basically comes down to term by term. So I'm going to use that in the next one. So again... We can either literally distribute this trinomial into this binomial and make it look like this, or I can cut to the chase, x needs to be distributed to every term over there. So as we do that, x times 2x squared is 2x cubed. x times negative 3x is a minus 3x squared, right? A positive times a negative. And then we have x times 1, well, that's a positive x. So I've just exhausted the distribution of x. Now, we distribute the negative 4, minus 4. So a negative times a positive is a negative. 4 times 2 is 8. And then we have an x squared. Next one, a negative times a negative is a positive. right? 4 times 3 is 12. And we have an x. A negative times a positive is a negative. 4 times 1 is 4. So we are literally distributing again, but just term by term. And then cleaning this up, uh, there's my highest degree term, so it's by itself. Here's a term with x squared, and here's a term with x squared. When I combine them, I get a negative 11x squared. And here's a term with x, and here's a term with x. When I combine them, I get a 13x. And then we have our minus 4. All right, and so basically term by term multiplication. And uh, that's going to be really nice for number 5. Right, because uh, again, you can show it through the distribution, or you can go through term by term, which is the way I'm going to handle this guy. So this is going to get a little crazy. So uh, hang on. Right. So the first thing I need to do is distribute the x squared. So when I distribute to x squared, I get x to the fourth. When I distribute it to this negative x, I get negative x cubed. And then when I distribute it to the negative four, I get negative four x squared. So I've just exhausted the term by term multiplication of x squared. Now we do the 2x, right? So 2x times x squared is a positive 2x cubed. A 2x times a negative x is a negative 2x squared. And then a positive 2x times a negative 4 is a negative 8x. So I've just exhausted the 2x. And then now the 3, 3 times x squared, well, that's a positive 3x squared. 3 times negative x is a negative 3x. And then a 3 times a negative 4 is a negative 12. Whew. All right, so since there's three terms and three terms, notice I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 terms after all that multiplication because we're literally term by terming, distributing all right, everything that goes. Now we have to look around and simplify this. 
Uh, the highest degree term is x to the fourth. Uh, here's an x cubed, and there's an x cubed, and I don't see any others. So when I combine my x cubed term, we have a negative x cubed, and we're adding two. So the net effect is just one x cubed. Looking at my x squared, right, here's an x squared, here's an x squared, and there's an x squared. So if I combine those, these first two, a negative 4 minus 2 is a negative 6. Adding 3, we get a negative 3x squared. And then here's an 8x, and here's a negative 3x. They're both like, so we get a negative 11x. And then this minus 12 is the only term like itself. So, whew. All right, pretty tough when you have a you know bigger polynomials. Um, I won't get any tougher on that. You could imagine if we had a four term times a four term, we have sixteen right term by term distributions. So that'd get really crazy. But that's about as hard as we're going to get, unless I throw fractions at you. But again, all we're doing is term by term multiplication. I'm going to go ahead and show that. So um, we're going to have one half times one fourth, right? And then we're going to add one half times one fifth. So there's my distribution of the one half. Plus, we're going to distribute the one third. So that's going to give us one third times one fourth x plus one third times one fifth. So despite the fractions, I'm still distributing term by term. Uh, multiplying here, we get one eighth x squared. Multiplying here, we get 1 tenth x, we get 1 twelfth x, and then it looks like right here we get 1 fifteenth. And so the only thing that we have left to do is those two terms are like, so I have to basically add some fractions. So let me do it up here. So 1 tenth and 1 twelfth, I believe the common, the LCD in this case would be 60. So 6 over 6 and 5 over 5 gives us 6 over 60 plus 5 over 60. So this looks like it's 11 over 60x. And then we have the two other terms that don't have anything in common. So 1 8 x squared plus 11 60x plus 1 over 15. And that's how we multiply polynomials to polynomials. We're ready for another topic. See you guys in the next videos.